Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Jalen and today I'm going over some book recommendations for summer. And I know we're already like a month into summer. I was trying to think of video ideas and this is what I came up with. We still have like two months left, so I'm not too late, but if you're looking for some summer vibes and you're reading, I think this list will have something for you. And also when I was compiling this list, I realized that a lot of these books have some interesting similarities and through lines and are sort of like indicative of what I'm looking for in a summer read. So let's get into it. So the first book I have is Just by Looking at Him by Ryan O'Connell. You might be familiar with Ryan O'Connell. He starred in the Netflix show Special and he's also currently on the reboot of Queer as Folk, which is on Peacock. And so he's already quite established in television, but this is his first foray into fiction. And I'm so glad he's writing, and I hope he continues to, because I absolutely adored this book. I had a blast with it. It follows a queer disabled man in his 30s named Elliot. And he, similarly to Ryan, is already quite established and doing well in his career in TV. However, he is dealing with some personal problems in his life. He's in a long-term relationship, and he starts cheating on his partner with an escort. And aside from that, he also has an intensifying addiction to alcohol. And so this book is really an existential crisis for Elliot, trying to think about what he wants out of his life and thinking about these various pressures on him and why he's behaving in this way and why he can't seem to stop hurting himself and other people. And it's told in these very quick, pacey chapters, so very similar to like Melissa Broder, who's also on this list. And you want a queer, pacey read for summer, I think this is a perfect one. And this one's really great on audio because Ryan O'Connell is very hilarious and a lot of his humor comes through really well in his narration in the audiobook, so I highly recommend that as well. If you want something that's heartwarming, and humorous while also dealing with some really dark topics. I think it's a perfect blend of all of those things in a quite literary way. And so, yeah, I love that book. It's so good. Next up, I have Sirens and Muses by Antonia Ingris. This book, I think it could fit like summer and fall vibes, but I read it in the summer and I loved the vibes there. So I wanted to put it in this video. This book follows four people at this art college in 2011 New England, right around the Occupy movements. Three of the characters, they are students at this art college and two of them are queer women who are roommates they're roughly 19 years old, and initially they start to be sort of cold towards each other as roommates, but they both have a longing for the other, and they show it in different ways. So there's sort of like a traditional romance trope going on there, but this book is so complex in terms of its look at art and politics. So while we have this sort of blooming romance between Louisa and Karina, as they progress in art school and try to create their own art, Karina seems to be quite gifted in her skill. And then Louisa, she's also very talented, but she's having a harder time sort of developing her art while at college. Then one day she asks Karina to sit for her and their romance sort of intensifies further. However, Karina, she comes from a quite privileged background and she starts to get quite interested in Preston, who's another student there. And he is kind of a fuckboy, for lack of a better word, but he also has quite a hidden past and some trauma from his past and he engages in a lot of like internet hoaxes and pranks to try to create art that way. They also have a romance that ensues. Preston, he then has a rivalry with a visiting professor at the school named Robert. And Robert had some quite acclaimed art from in, from the 80s around the ACT UP movement. And you see how he has sort of kind of fallen from grace a little bit in the art community and him trying to reestablish himself and find himself again through art. And so what this book does really well is it looks at art and politics and the sort of blend between those two things while also trying to find yourself and looking at queer desire and trying to figure out what's going to happen to these characters when Preston engages in quite a big hoax that brings them all together. And so this book is so plotty and just a page turner, but I really loved the character development and I tend to find that I like plot in the summer, if that makes sense. Like, you know, reading in the pool or on, you know, traditional beach reads, I think this is perfect for that, but also has a lot of nuance in its look at art and politics. And also, um, next week I'm actually interviewing Antonia Angris, so keep an eye out for that if you're interested in the book. So yeah, I love that one. It was a blast to read, and I couldn't put it down when I picked it up, and I think that's a good sign for a summer read. Next up, I have another recent read, which is quite a doozy of a novel. It's Tampa by Alyssa Nutting. This book, in terms of content, is so bleak and disturbing, but it's doing some really interesting things, I think, with the character at the heart of this book. So we follow a 26-year-old middle school teacher named Celeste, and this is told in the first person, so we're very much in her head, and she's a pedophile, and she has this obsession with 14-year-old boys, and so she kind of skews her entire life sort of in pursuit of her trying to prey on 14-year-old boys. And so in this book, you follow her trying to get the affections of one of her students named Jack. This book is incredibly intense, but I recommended this book in summer because I think just from a plot perspective, this is a book when you pick it up, while it's 
incredibly disturbing and hard to read at times given you're in the head of a pedophile. This is also very unputdownable and it's actually darkly humorous I would say in its telling and also quite smart I think in terms of what Alyssa Nutting is doing in terms of looking at female beauty and the societal expectations of women what they're able to get away with particularly in this setting and how given her beauty she's able to get away with so much in this book while she's also very self-aware of what she's doing and so this book is interesting in terms of seeing Celeste being so deeply rooted in her beliefs and her trying to engage in sexual acts with minors, but I think it's interesting how this book kind of parses through the societal view on what's happening in this book by the end of it. So all the content warnings going into this one, it really dabbles into all of that, I will say. But I think from a plot perspective and a, as an interesting character study, like in the vein of Otessa Moshveg, I would say, this book is very similar in that regard, and I think it's really well written and interesting and engaging while being highly disturbing, but saying something smart. Next up is another kind of similar book, I would say, in terms of style, is The Pisces by Melissa Broder. This one has been around since I think like 2018, so I know many people on here have read it, but I recently read it and I think it's a perfect book for summer in terms of us following a woman falling in love with a merman. What's more summer than like merman sex, you know what I mean? We follow a woman who's trying to fill the existential hole in herself after a breakup, with love and affection and seeing how that plays out for her. And this book is very funny, but also in terms of content, very graphic. And it's just a blast to read. Like I love Melissa Broder's fiction, but I love how she kind of plays with these philosophical ideas while using a very wild premise to explore these things. And so her books are always just so engaging. And again, as I mentioned previously, her books are told in very short chapters and I just love that in my summer fiction. So The Pisces is a banger, I must say, as is her other book, Milk Fed. I think they're both really good pieces of fiction, but The Pisces feels a little bit more summery in my opinion. Next up, I have Last Resort by Andrew Lipstein. This is a book that, again, engages in some fun plot, but is also really interesting in terms of its literary qualities, I would say. So this book is very much looking at the ideas of authenticity and writing. So we follow this guy who gets a book deal. However, this book that he wrote is based on the true events that happened to a friend of his that tells him the story of a wild summer that he has that is sexual and quite personal to him. And the main character here, he ends up writing a novel based on that story that he told to him. And after he sells the book and gets a huge deal for it, the friend comes back to lay claim to the story and sues him, given the story being based on his real life. We follow the main character as he tries to make this sort of like deal with the devil in terms of what he has to do to get the book published and what he agrees to in the pursuit of literary acclaim and if you've been following the like bad art friend stories of late or thinking about these questions of authenticity and who owns the stories that we tell I think this one is unputdownable and I myself as a lawyer I loved reading about the sort of ideas of copyright and what stories people are able to tell in the lawsuit that's at the core of this novel is really interesting. So yeah, if you want some literary gossip drama in your fiction this is a perfect one that also feels quite summary given the novel within the novel that's going on in this book. Next up, I have Revenge of the Scapegoat by Karen Balin. This is out from a really cool press that I've been getting into lately. It's Dorothy Project. In this one, we follow a woman named Iris. She is an adjunct professor at a city arts college. And one day she receives a package in the mail from her father. And in this package are a bunch of letters that her father wrote to her when she was in her teens that sort of blame her for the family fallout that has ensued in her life. And so the father is placing all the blame on Iris and Iris gets this package and she's thinking about her familial past and trauma in that regard, and it sort of sends her spiraling, quite literally. And so since she's received these letters for the second time in her life and is sort of unearthing all this familial trauma for her, she ends up fleeing to the countryside. And from there, this story is so absurdist that I'll let it kind of be a mystery for you. But I loved the story from the perspective of a woman who suffers from chronic pain and is thinking through the various pains in her life, whether it's the present pain that she's experiencing tied with the past pain of her family trauma and what it feels like to be a scapegoat for your family and being blamed for familial crises and traumas. I really liked how Karen Balin in this book plays a lot with artistic references and in the story she suffers from rheumatoid arthritis and her feet become two characters that sort of argue with each other and it's really just surrealist and weird and just really engaging the entire time that you're reading it. But you know me, I love like a scathing narrator who is angry and thinking about wrongs that have been done to her, tied with these sort of referential and weird artistic things in the book and how that all plays out by the end of it. It's a very weird and interesting book that I want to reread actually. A really slim little book, so if you're looking for something quick and pacey, complex I think in its telling, subtly, I think you'll like this one. Next I have Paradise by Fernando Melchor. This is a book that's been getting a lot of coverage lately on booktube as it was long listed for the international booker prize this year but i am a huge fernando melchor stan i love her writing i think she's 
one of the most singular and original and interesting authors working right now. This book is a follow-up to her immensely successful debut novel, Hurricane Season. And this book is a novella of sorts, and it looks at these two teenagers that are living in this luxury complex in Mexico. One of them is an overweight teenager who comes from a very privileged background. His family is quite rich, and he has a sexual obsession with his neighbor. And the other teenager, he is a gardener in this complex, and they end up drinking together and hanging out a lot, but he comes from a narco-controlled village. And so you see their differences in class um, throughout this book and seeing how they're both dealing with their internal struggles and familial struggles and how they start to scheme together in a way building up to a huge climax in, in which the teenager with the sexual obsession starts planning to commit an act of sexual violence against the neighbor. The gardener, his sort of complicity in this and how it all comes to a boiling head by the end of the novel. And when you pick this book up, I highly recommend you just go through it in one sitting. This book makes you feel claustrophobic and sticky given Fernanda Melchor's writing style. She, she uses a lot of aggressive and derogatory language in her books, but she's using it intentionally to make the reader sort of feel this claustrophobia in terms of the setting here and the characters and the inner struggles and really replicating that through the reading experience. And I love seeing how she's able to do that and make you feel so uncomfortable, but unable to look away from the pages. And so if you want something that's very, just makes you feel sweaty, I would say, and just stressed out by the end of it, this is a book for you, but in the best way possible. This book is wild, and this is also one that I'm due for a reread on. Hurricane Season is also another good one for summer, I would think, for similar reasons, but this one's shorter, and as I said, I like that brevity in the summer. So next, I have Asylum Road by Olivia Sujic. This is a book that is also similarly quite summery in its setting and sort of the claustrophobia going on here, but this one looks at a fraught relationship between a couple. So we follow this couple that's driving from London to Coastal Province, and we see how their relationship seems to be near its end. And we're in the head of the, our narrator named Anya, and she's thinking about the relationship and her own familial trauma in her past. And she's thinking that the relationship is going to end soon. But when they are in London, Luke, her partner, ends up proposing to her. And so after they're engaged, Anya starts thinking more about her past and how kind of how she got into this relationship. And given the wedding and everything that's going on, she is forced to sort of return to her family. And you see how this sort of causes Anya to reach a breaking point. And so this one is a literary thriller, I would say, in terms of the very, again, claustrophobic feeling of this book, in terms of Anya, we know something's quite not right with her. But this one doesn't really have the trappings, I would say, of like the trauma plot that I've been talking about on my channel this year. It does not feel derivative at all. It's very much centered in its place and setting so that it feels like you're very much in the head of Anya and, and the suspense that comes with that. So next up I have Virtue by Hermione Hobby. This one just came out in paperback in the US and I think this one is quite an underhyped and underread book that I think a lot of people on booktube would really enjoy but I haven't seen much coverage at all on it which is really interesting so this one follows a 22 year old named luca he is in new york and he's working as an intern for this very established new york magazine which i think is supposed to be the new yorker and the book is told from this perspective of him in his 30s and he's now married and he's thinking back upon this time right around donald trump's inauguration and what happens to him over the course of this internship and then over the summer so when he's at this internship he has a friend who her name is zara and she's a young black woman who is very vocal in the office about social issues, particularly around this time and the election. And then one day during this internship, he ends up meeting this very established... What the fuck was that noise? So right around this time in this internship, he ends up befriending or meeting this very artistic, established, privileged white couple. And I forget their professions, but they're both very well off. I think they're both artists. And they end up inviting Luca to stay with them over the summer with their family at this very luxurious summer house. And so Luca ends up sort of escaping the realities of what's going on back in New York and ends up getting in this very romantic, full of longing, kind of odd relationship with this couple and their dynamic and a sort of romantic obsession with this couple over the course of the summer. So back in New York, while Luca's sort of living in bliss at the summer house, something tragic happens. It sort of shocks him back into reality and him thinking about his sort of complicity in what has happened while he's been away. And so this book is a lot about virtue signaling and thinking about how does one behave in a way that is morally correct while also trying to pursue a career and passions in a very selfish manner and what that looks like to be a virtuous person and really kind of unpacking the 
present societal ideas around virtue and virtue signaling. And so I think this book is very nuanced in its approach. But I think if you like books like Second Place and also like Beautiful World, Where Are You? Those two books, I think, if you put them in one, you would get this one. And the prose is gorgeous. The setting is very evocative, but also saying a lot about our present moment and quite interesting artistically. So if you like either of those books, I think you should check this out. It's really good. Okay, next up, I think I have like the ultimate summer recommendation for me personally. Like if I think of summer books, like this is the one that stands out. It's Something New Under the Sun by Alexandra Kleeman. This one came out last summer, and this is very much a cli-fi novel that has a lot going on in it. It's sort of like a a cli-fi novel, a detective novel, a commentary on celebrity. There's a lot going on in this book, but essentially we follow this novelist who is invited out to Hollywood to work on an adaptation of his novel. Water has become a very rare resource, and so corporations have started making this sort of fake water that is being distributed, but as we gradually learn, that water is starting to have an adverse impact on people that drink it. Essentially, we follow our main character as he's in Hollywood and starts working with this child actress who is essentially like Lindsay Lohan. Um, that's who I had in mind when I read this, but she is going to star in the adaptation of his novel. And meanwhile, back at home, he has left his wife and child, I think he has one child, back there. And they sort of go to this uh, commune of sorts in terms of trying to live off the land and thinking about the environmental collapse around them. But then once we're back in Hollywood and we're seeing the adaptation play out. There's some really odd characters here and it seems unclear whether this adaptation is even actually being made, which is really interesting. And we see how that all plays out and the ways that water starts to impact the story. I think if this book was in the hands of another novelist, this book could easily fall apart, but Alexander Kleeman is so deft at storytelling that she's able to keep all of these moving parts and genres and general like vibes in the story so cohesive and interesting and engaging throughout in the setting of being in california with wildfires kind of raging all around the setting it very much feels to me quite summary and this idea of a near post-apocalyptic vibe was really perfect for summer last summer when i read this so yeah that one is excellent and quite different and hard to pin down exactly but i loved the reading experience of it so that's that one Next up, I have The Third Hotel by Laura Vandenberg. This is one that is really interesting and fits the sort of vibe of fever dream novels, which I feel like is kind of running through this list of books. But this one follows a grieving widow who is in Cuba, and her husband was this really um, interesting director of horror films, and she's going to this film festival in Cuba. But when she's there, she starts seeing her husband around, even though he's dead. And so this book becomes this idea of, in the form of like a fever dream, this widow trying to deal with these hallucinations and figuring out her relationship with her deceased husband and what that all means while using this sort of horror device and like the horror tropes in it to sort of play with this ghost story idea as well, which was really fun. And Laura Vandenberg, I love her writing so much. Her short story collection, I Hold a Wolf by the Ears, to this day still remains my favorite short story collection. And this novel is really interesting seeing how she plays with these sort of surrealist elements to tell the story that in terms of setting is so summary to me, but also has a lot of my favorite themes in terms of grieving and looking at horror and seeing that all play out for this character was really wild and hallucinatory. Next, I have another short story collection. Aside from I Hold a Wolf by the Ears, it's Milk Blood Heat by Duntiel Moniz. This is a collection of stories that are, I think, entirely set in Florida. So whenever I read something that's set in Florida, it gives me the vibe of summer. The style tends to be quite hot and humid and sticky in its telling, and this one is very much rooted in setting, but really is quite innovative in its storytelling in terms of it looking at religion and family and she uses a lot of surprise in these stories which i really like um yeah if you're looking for setting forward short stories i think this is a really good collection my last two i have die my love by ariana harwicks this is a very deeply disturbing literary horror novel following a woman who is a new mother and she's living in the french countryside and she's having very intrusive thoughts about committing violence towards her young child and so this book is very much thinking about motherhood and being a wife and thinking about the sort of expectations that are placed on her as a new mother and her longing for more through a very dark and interior 
reflection on these intrusive thoughts of being a new mother and how that all plays out for her. And this book is deeply suspenseful because, again, it's sort of like a fever dream in terms of us not really knowing what is real and what's not in terms of her narration. But given that interiorness and claustrophobia in the hot setting, this book really is evocative of summer, but will deeply disturb you, I think. This book is not for the faint of heart, but I really enjoyed the reading experience from like an innovative perspective of her kind of using this blend of setting with character and interiority to a really interesting effect. So trigger warnings for sure, but that one is really excellent. And so the last book I have on this list is Commonwealth by Ann Patchett, which is a novel that upon reflection, I think is a masterpiece. I don't really understand how Ann Patchett is so incredible and in how she sort of tells these really huge family histories in such a short novel, particularly in this book. But we follow these two families that sort of come together when the father of one family and the mother of the other, they end up cheating on their spouses respectively and how the families become intermingled through the development of their affair and looking at this family over the course of I think like five decades, if I recall correctly. And so this book is quite short for how much it packs into it. And I think for that alone, it's worth the read. But the intro scene in which we sort of see how the families come together and this act of adultery plays out, it feels so summery to me. It's told at this christening party and everyone's drinking gin and orange juice and they're intoxicated and just has that like summer feel to it. So I think if you're looking for like a, a family saga that it tells a huge story in a very short amount of time, I think this is perfect for you. And I just loved... Her characterization here, how she's able to keep control over the narrative without even having like timelines presented to you. It's very expertly told in its craft, which I think Anne Patchett is excellent at doing. In the end, looking at this list, I tend to find that I like books that are very much rooted in like a hot setting for summer. Also, if they're quite breezy in their plot, quite quickly paced, I don't really read as many, I would say, like interior thinky novels in the summer. I, I also like some darkness in my summer books. I like darkness and everything. But um, yeah, I hope you like these recommendations. And if you have any recommendations based on this list, please let me know. I'm always looking for new stuff and hopefully finding something for the rest of my summer. Anyways, I hope you find something you like here. I will catch you all in the next one. Bye.